It has to be that way, because you guys are all so young So in some sense, you know way more than you can actually know, right? You've been taught all these things, but you don't know them They're just in your head In fact, they have you, rather than the other way around It's like Carl Jung said, people don't have ideas Ideas have people And that's something to really think about, because then you want to watch and see what ideas there are floating around in your head And start to figure out where they came from, because it's highly probable that they're controlling you, just like a marionette Is controlled by the puppeteer It's very, very similar And there's an inauthenticity about that, and so that brings us into existentialism So now I want to talk to you a little bit about existentialists, because Existentialists are very concerned with authenticity And so you could say that, above all else, existentialists are concerned with truth Now, of course, we know that it's not very easy to define exactly what constitutes truth And, and I would also say there are various definitions of truth that can be used for different purposes You know, because your definitions of truth can also have a tool-like function and, and, and finally, that we can't come up with an ultimate definition of truth, because we're not Infinitely informed, right? So ignorance is going to underlie our claims all the time But that doesn't eradicate the validity of the concept of truth And I think one of the ways you can deal with that existentially is that you may not be able to determine what's true at any given moment But it's quite a different matter to determine what's false That's a lot easier So one of the things I have to tell my clients, for example, is uh, here, Here's a way to clean up your life Stop doing the things that you know are wrong That you could stop doing Right, so it's, it's, a, fairly, it's a fairly limited attempt First of all, we're not going to say that you know What the good is or what the truth is In any ultimate sense But we will presume that there are things that you're doing That for one reason or another you know are not in your best interests There's something about them that you just know you should stop They're kind of self-evident to you Other things you're going to be doubtful about You're not going to know which way is up and which way is down But there are things that you're doing that you know you shouldn't do Now, some of those you won't stop doing For whatever reason, you don't have the discipline, or maybe there's a secondary payoff Or you don't believe it's necessary, or it's too much of a sacrifice Or you're angry, or resentful, or, or afraid, who knows So forget about those for now But there's another subset that you could stop doing It might be a little thing, well, that's fine, stop doing it And see what happens And what'll happen is your vision will clear a little bit And then something else will pop up In your field of apprehension That you will also know you should stop doing And that you could stop doing Because you strengthened yourself a bit by stopping doing the particular stupid thing that you were doing before That just puts you together a little bit more And you could do that Repeatedly For, for an indefinite period of time and, and You know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to ever be able to formulate a clear and final picture of what constitutes the truth and the good But it does mean that you'll be able to continually move away from what's untruth and what's bad And, you know, that's not a bad start 